Hello everyone, in this video we will see about wireless sensor network architecture that is layered architecture and clustered architecture. But before I'm going to give you an introduction about architecture of wireless sensor network, the point comes in our mind is why wireless sensor. So suppose we have wired network that fulfill all requirements and can be applied to all application, then why we need wireless sensor network? So some factors are given by Murray's law by which we get to understand why we need wireless sensor network. And these are, the first one is Murray's law is making sufficient CPU performance available with low power requirements in a small size. Second one is research in material science has resulted in novel sensing material for chemical, biological and physical sensing tasks. Third one is transceivers for wireless devices are becoming smaller, less expensive and less power hungry. And the last one is power source improvement in batteries as well as passive power sources such as solar or vibration energy are expanding application options. So this is the reason we need wireless sensor network. Now, what is wireless sensor network? So as the name indicates that we have wireless devices that are sensing something throughout the network. And the job of wireless sensor network is it is especially designed for self-governing devices that uses sensors for monitoring physical or environmental conditions. For example, the touch screen which we are using that is having sensor by which we are putting certain pattern or we are just touching whatever folder it is opening it. So basically this is the job of wireless sensor network. Now if you can see this diagram then this is a wireless sensor network that consists of several nodes like sound, heat, vibration. They all are connected to sync node. Internet is there, user is there. So if I'm a user and I'm using something, whether it is wired device or wireless device, if I'm connecting it through internet, then there is always a sync node. A sync node is basically an intermediate between wireless sensor network and internet. And this is a sensor node which is meant for sensing. And this is a target node which basically sends data to its predecessor and so on. The whole connection takes place to the internet. So this is all about wireless sensor network too. Now come to sensor network architecture. A sensor network architecture is used in wireless sensor network. It can be used in various places like schools, hospitals, buildings, roads, etc. And can be applied to various applications like disaster management, security management, crisis management, etc. The design of sensor network is very important as it has a significant impact on network scalability, fault tolerance and power consumption. And there are two types of architecture used in wireless sensor network that is layered network architecture and clustered architecture. So the first one is layered network architecture. A layered architecture has a single powerful base station and the layers of sensor nodes around it correspond to nodes that have the same hope count to the base station. In the in-building scenario, base station become an access point to a wire network and small nodes from wireless backbone to provide wireless connectivity. Layered architecture have been used in in-building wireless backbones and in in-military sensor-based infrastructure such as multi-hope infrastructure network architecture. So if you can see this diagram, then this is a single base station. These are the sensor nodes and this is a one hope layer. Here the sensor node directly communicate with the base station. This is a two hope layer. This is a three hope layer. Basically here the sensor nodes are divided into layer wise. And this is a coverage area. So if the sensor node of two hope layer wants to communicate with the base station, then they first transmit information to the sensor node of one hope layer and then they communicate with the base station. So basically the advantage of layered architecture is that each node is involved in a short distance so that there is low power consumption here. In layered architecture, the protocol used here is UNPF, that is Unified Network Protocol Framework. Unified Network Protocol Framework is a set of protocols for complete implementation of layered architecture for sense networks. UNPF integrates three operations. The first one is Network Initialization and Maintenance, MAC Protocol and Routing Protocol. So in Network Initialization and Maintenance, 
it shows how base station connect nodes here the base station can reach all nodes in a one hop communication or common control channel base station broadcast its identifier using cdma on common control channel and the sensor node sends its identifier and send its signal to the base station so after first phase the second phase used here is mac protocol basically mac uses dtroc that is distributed tdma receiver orientation channel that performs channel allocation and channel scheduling so that they avoid hidden and exposed terminal protocol and the last one is routing protocol so routing protocol performs downlink and uplink to the base station so in this way base station broadcast its information in layered architecture and if you want to establish a small range communication then it's better to use layered architecture here the layers are divided into hop wise also in layered architecture it follows osi model that is basically there are five layers in sensor network these are application layer transport layer network layer data link layer physical layer and the three cross layers planes that is power management plane mobility management plane and task management plane so physical layer can provide an interface to transmit a stream of bits over physical medium data link layer is responsible for data correction and error detection mechanism here the main function of network layer is routing it has a lot of task based on application but actually the main task is power conserving partial memory buffer and sensor and have to be self organized the function of transport layer is to provide congestion avoidance and reliability and there are a lot of protocol designed to provide this function are applied on upstream and downstream and the last one is application layer it is responsible for traffic management and provide software for different application that translate the data in an understandable form or send queries to obtain information now in power management plan it is responsible for managing the power level of sensor nodes for processing sensing and communication in mobility management plan it is responsible for configuration or reconfiguration or of sensor nodes in attempt to establish or maintain network connectivity in task management plan this it, it is responsible for distribution of task among sensor nodes to prolong network lifetime and improve energy efficiency so the advantage of using layer network architecture is that each node participates in short distance low power transmissions to nodes of the neighboring nodes because of which power consumption is less as compared to other sensor network architecture it is scalable and high fault tolerance and the second one is cluster network architecture a cluster architecture organizes the sensor nodes into clusters each node is governed by a cluster head the node in each cluster are involved in message exchanges with their respective cluster heads and this heads sends message to base station cluster architecture is especially useful for sensor networks because of its inherent suitability for data fusion the data gathered by all members of cluster can be fused at the cluster head and only the resulting information need to be communicated to base station means this is a single base station these are the sensor nodes and this is a cluster head so if sensor node wants to transmit information to the base station then they first transmit to the cluster head and then cluster head sends data to the base station here the sensor node gather the data and then fuse data into cluster head and then cluster head perform computation and then send useful data to the base station here the sensor node should be self organized and it must be autonomous and perform distributed process to perform distributed process it uses lich low energy adaptive clustering hierarchy so a lich is a clustering based protocol that minimizes energy dissipation in the sensor network and 
they are split into two phases that is setup and study phase in setup phase the whole architecture are set up here that is the selection of cluster head forming clusters etc and it and in study phase it perform transmission that is transmission of data to head of the cluster node and then from head of the cluster node to the base station may be possible next time another node is a head of cluster so for this particular node we again perform lich now the properties of lich protocol is it is a two tier hierarchy clustering architecture it is distributed algorithm for organizing the sensor nodes into groups called clusters the cluster head node in each of the autonomously formed clusters create the tdma that is time division multiple action schedules and it makes the use of concept called data fusion which may it energy efficient data fusion means all data are combined and fuse it to the cluster head and then transmit it to the base station so this is all about cluster architecture do i hope you like this video